Hey everyone, Gabriel here, and in this video, I'm gonna be doing a case study on a new store that I've been working on that I launched just last month, and in 25 days, I've been able to scale it to over $100,000 in sales. And this was all with Facebook ads. And so I'm gonna be giving you an in-depth overview of everything that I've done so far in order to achieve this. I'm gonna be talking about the product, the store, the ads, really everything that you wanna know. And another cool thing that I'm gonna be showing you in this video is a week-by-week -week profit and loss statement. So I'm gonna be showing you how much I made or lost in the first week, in the second week, in the third week, and so on, and how much I made overall out of this $110,000 in sales. So I think that's gonna be a really interesting part of the video as well because one of the most common questions I get is how much capital do you need in order to start something like this? So that's what this video is gonna be about. Now before we jump right into it, I wanna show you a little bit of proof. So this is the store here, as you can see, uh, so far today, 8.9K in sales. These are the sales since starting. So as you can see, um, this store was started on June 10th. This was the first day. And it was a really slow start, um, mainly because this is just a side project of mine. I have a, another private label brand that I'm working on mainly. Uh, I've talked about this, a few, about this brand a few times in my past videos. And this is just a side project that I launched. And the reason that I actually launched this store is that I wanted to launch a new store from scratch with the method that I teach in my course, Ecom Blueprint, and show that it still works you know, in 2019 and beyond. And so that's what I did. I actually started a brand new store from scratch uh, and with the method that I teach in my course and on my YouTube channel. It's the same method that I teach on my YouTube channel and on my course. My course is just more advanced. And so um, clearly the method still works, right? In less than 30 days, I was able to scale up to over $100,000 in sales. And yes, this is profitable. I'll be getting into that in the video. So that's what this video is about. And let's just not waste any more time and get right into it. All right, so first off, I wanna talk a little bit about the product in the store just to give you a better idea of what I'm selling and why I think that it's selling so well. So this is a one product store and I actually found the product for it through a Facebook ad. So I got targeted by an ad on Facebook and the product immediately caught my attention as being a good option for a one product store. And the reason that it caught my attention as being a good option is that it meets all of the criteria that I talk about for what a winning product looks like. So this, this product solves a problem, and this is very important. Problem solving products are the best to, to sell in my opinion. And this solves a very common problem. So this is even better, right? If a problem is very common, that means that there's more people to, to target. And so you can, you can scale more and you can keep selling it for longer. A good example of this would be the posture corrector. I've talked about this product a few times before. Um, this, this is a, a product that solves a very common problem, right? It doesn't matter if you're 20, if you're 30, uh, 60, if you're a man or a woman, you could still be affected by poor posture and slouching. And so it's a very common problem and uh, products that solve a very common problem are, you know, are the best in my opinion. That is one of the main things that I look for when I'm searching for a product. And this product uh, from this case study is like that. It solves a very common problem. Now, another good thing about this is that it's not commonly found in stores. Uh, this is another factor that's important. You don't want your product to be easily found in brick and mortar stores, right? You don't want someone to see your ad and then think, oh, I should go out and drive to the local Walmart to go buy this, right? You want them to see your ad and think, I've never seen this before, so I'm gonna have to order it online because I can't get it anywhere else. That's the kind of reaction you want from someone when they see your ad. And so um, to get that reaction, you want products that are not commonly found in stores. Uh, this product is trending up. If you go on Google Trends and search for the product uh, for the product category, it's trending up. There's a very strong trend for this type of product in the past five years. So this is um, this is a great sign for if I want to keep selling this long term. Uh, the product has wow factor. Wow factor. Once again, it's a very important criteria for a winning product. Uh, if if a product has wow factor, it, it'll be much easier to advertise on social media. And realizing that the product meets all of the criteria, I decided to do a bit of competitive research to see if I can find any other stores who are actively selling this product. Um, because to me, that is the biggest form of validation. If I can find a few other stores who are actively selling that product, and by actively selling, I mean they're consistently running ads for that product, making new ads, and you can see that they just recently posted new ads and they have a lot of views already. If you can find such competitors, that means that the product is selling well, and so you can do the same thing, and you can probably do it even better if you just make better ads, you make a better store, et cetera. And so that's what I like to do when I find a product that I wanna sell. I look for competitors who are already selling it, and that to me is the ultimate validation if I can find recent competitors who are actively selling that product. And so for this product in, uh, particularly, I found two, two to three competitors actively selling it, and to me, that was just the confirmation. Now, a few other things to note, uh, this product had approximately 3,000 orders on AliExpress when I started. 
So this is just to give you an idea, right? Um, I often say you want to look for products that have at least a thousand orders on AliExpress. So this one had at least a thousand, but it didn't have a crazy number like 30,000 or something the, to the point that you would think it's very saturated. And the last thing that I put here is that I'm doing 3x pricing. So I'm pricing my product at approximately three times what it costs for me to get it and ship it to the customer. And for the time being, I'm doing no upsells. And so this, uh, I'm missing out a lot of profit here by not doing any upsells. And so this, this store would actually be a lot more profitable if I was upselling something. Um, but like I said, this is just a side project, which is why I haven't set this up yet. So that's it for the overview on the product uh, and store. I hope that gives you a better idea. And now let's move on to the ads. To put together the first ad to test this product, what I did is I took video clips from the supplier on Alibaba. So I found the supplier on Alibaba and they had a few video clips with this product. And I also took some clips from YouTube and I used all of that to put together a first video ad. And so I added here, avoid using clips featuring someone's face from YouTube. You can get in trouble with that and just avoid um, just be mindful of which clips you're taking on YouTube because you can definitely get in copyright issues um, just taking clips that aren't yours and using them for commercial purposes. So be careful with that. But usually if you avoid using people's face, if you avoid using people's faces and you switch to your own content as soon as possible, um, you're not going to get into any issues. So that's what I did. I took video clips from the supplier and YouTube to put together a first ad. Um, I made a fast paced ad, so three to four second clips uh, with captions on screen. So, you know, typical Facebook ad. Um, it brings up a problem in the first few seconds. So my, my scroll stopper is, uh, is I bring up the problem. So in the first few seconds, I put the problem in their face and then I offer the solution with my product in the remainder of the video. And that's the structure that works really well for, for this product and for a lot of the products that I've run in the past. Um, this ad is 25 to 30 seconds long. And I found that the shorter, the better um, for ads. And this is just a general rule. I mean, it, it really depends on your product, on your brand and in specific cases. But in my experience, it's better to aim for shorter ads, right? So um, try to condense your message and remove anything that's not necessary and just keep it short and snappy and to the point. And that's what performs best in my experience. And to put the ad together, I use the iPhone app InShot. Um, a lot of people ask, you know, for free video editing tool. And this is surprisingly the best one I found. It's, it's, I'm laughing because it's an iPhone app, right? You wouldn't expect a good video editor to be on iPhone, but InShot is actually a really, really solid app for, for editing things together. I also use Animoto, but Animoto isn't free. InShot is free and it's, um, it's got a lot of features. All right, so what I want to do now is give you an overview of my Facebook ads launch strategy. And it's a bit complicated, so I broke it down into three phases to hopefully make it easier to understand. And this is the exact strategy that I used to launch this store. So the first phase is the initial data collection. This is when you're just launching a new store, you don't have any data, and so you don't really know who the best people to target are, and you can't build lookalike audiences or anything like that. And so your goal in this phase is just to get the ball rolling, just to get the spend going so that you start collecting data and you know start to get things moving. And so what I like to do for this phase is I like to do first a PP campaign. So this is how I start off all my products. I'll do a PP campaign. In this case for this store, I did 18 plus all genders, T4 countries. So T4 countries, when I write that, that means US, UK, Canada, and Australia. And so I did this PP campaign at the start to get video viewer data. Once I had enough video viewer data and this, um, the video viewer data, what you want is 95% video viewers. And so once I had about 2,000, 2,095% video viewers, and you can see this in ads manager, if you pull up the column for 95% video viewers, once I had this amount of video viewers, I launched lookalike audiences based on 95% video viewers. And so I launched uh, zero to 5%. So I did 1%, 1 to 2%, uh, 2 to 3% and so on. So that's five ad sets there. And then I also launched 10 broad single interests. So just random interest. I just thought of different interests um, that I could think of based on the product, different angles, right? So not just like 10 of really similar interests. You want to try different approaches and see what works. And so that's what I did here. And that's what I mean by the initial data collection is you just want to launch ad sets. You just want to get the ball rolling and get some spend going so that you start collecting data. And so that's what I did here. Um, and I put C here, if you don't have any audiences, if after testing all these audiences, the 95% video viewers lookalikes and 10 broad interests minimum, if after all of that, you don't have any audiences with a conversion rate above two to 3%, then you should work on improving your offer. And this is really important because, um, this whole, this whole Facebook ads strategy is based on data and collecting data. But if you have a really, really low conversion rate, it's going to take forever to collect data and you're going to have to spend a lot of money and it's just not going to work well. Right? So the first thing is that if you're not, 
if your visitors are not converting into add to carts, initiate checkouts or purchases, then you need to work on improving your offer uh, and your store before moving forward. So that's really, really important. So that's the first phase, the initial data collection. Now, the second phase is data driven targeting. This is when you've actually collected some data. So now you actually have something to work with. And so what you want to do is you want to focus in on the best interests and demographics that you've identified, right? So you've been testing these interests, which ones were the best. Um, based on that, you should create, you should, te you should test new interests similar to the best ones. You should narrow down um, if there's like a, a specific demographic that performs best, you should narrow down to that demographic. And also at this point, you should have, you should have more data for lookalikes, right? Uh, in the first phase, we launched 95% video viewers lookalikes. But in the second phase, um, you've already been collecting data for a little bit. So at this point, you should have enough data for different lookalike audiences. For example, website visitors, top visitors by time spent, um, add to cart, initiate checkout, purchase, um, value-based lookalikes. These are also really, really powerful. Once you have at least 500 purchases, I'd recommend for, for value-based lookalikes. But these are all different lookalikes that you can test once you have data. And so this is why I call it data-driven targeting is because you have better lookalikes and you also have um, the data based on what you've tested before, right? So um, you can break down the ad sets that you've been running and see if there's a specific age group that performs better than narrow down to that, right? So this phase is just focusing in on the best performing audiences and launching more lookalikes, basically using the data that you've collected so far to narrow down your targeting. And then you wanna identify the top audiences. That's, that's important as well. You should know what your top audiences are. And this is important for the next phase, which is ad creative optimization. So phase one is collecting data. Phase two is using that data to find the best audiences. And phase three is the creative optimization. So what you want to do in this phase is use the top audiences from phase two and test new creatives, right? Because it's very unlikely that the, the, first, the first few creatives you test are going to be the absolute best creatives that you can make, right? And by creative, what I mean is an, a video ad or an image ad. A creative is just an ad. It's just a term for an ad. Everything like the headline, everything that enc encapsulates an ad, you call that a creative. And so you want to test different creatives with your top audiences in order to lower your costs and get more actions taken on your website. And so this is how you go from not being profitable to being extremely profitable. If you remember at the start of the video, when I showed you, um, when I showed you the sales graph, it was very, very slow at the start. And then it just took off and it took off in phase three once identified new um, winning creatives. So that's essentially the launch strategy. And I wrote here that buying data at the start is crucial because data leads to strong lookalike audience targeting and effective purchase optimization. So the more data you get, the more purchase data you get, not just purchase data, but purchase data especially, the more data you get, the better your results tend to become. And the reason is, is that you get better lookalike audiences, right? which is half of the equation, the audience, you get better audiences to target because you have better source data. And then you also get better purchase optimization because you have more data to work with. And so Facebook's algorithm can be more effective at picking out the right people to show your ad to. And so as you collect more data, um, things just get easier and easier. And then the most important thing becomes testing ad creatives, hence phase three being ad creative optimization. So that's the launch strategy. And now I'm going to hop into ads manager to show you that. All right. So I'm inside of the ad account for that store. And let me just refresh that for you. And as you can see so far today, I've spent 5,000 and generated back 11.5 thousand. And these are Canadian dollar numbers. So the US dollar numbers would be smaller and the return on ad spend is 2.3. So very good results, very profitable. The break even return on ad spend is right around 1.6. And so with this kind of return, I'm, I'm around 20, 25%, uh, 25% profit probably. And so that's not the point that I want to show you phase by phase. And so the first week is a good approximation for the first phase. And this is when I was just the, the initial data collection phase. And so this was from June 10th to the 16th. And as you can see, um, I was actually just, um, most of my budget was going towards this audience tests campaign. And I was just testing audiences and collecting data. And as you can see, I, I spent 11, um, I spent $1,800 to generate back 2000 for a return on ad spend of 1.1. So in this first week, I was definitely losing money. Now, if I go to the next week, um, this is the, da the data driven targeting phase, right? So this is after this first week, I started to have some data, right? Uh, in that first week, I collected um, 1800 content views, 120 add to carts. Um, so, you know, I started to get a little bit of data. I didn't have enough data for really good lookalike audiences yet, like add to carts. That's barely enough data purchases. 
So I didn't have enough data for the good lookalike audiences, but I could already start doing uh, website visitors lookalike audiences, top visitors by time spent lookalike audiences. And so that's what we're gonna see in the next phase is that my return on ad spend is gonna go up because I started to, to use the data I had to target. And so um, you can see, there you go. In the second phase, um, in the second week, I should say, in the second week, my return on ad spend went up significantly and so did my ad spend. Now, if I go to week three, this is the creative optimization phase. So this is when I already have good audiences and I'm just testing new creatives with it. And you'll see that this is, um, this is when it really starts taking off. So 24 to 30th, uh, third week since launching the store. Um, and boom, 28,000 spent, 63,000 uh, 63, return on ad spend, 2.24 return. So in that third week, I spent a lot more. It was uh, very profitable. And that's because I was optimizing the creatives and I was finding new ads and optimizing everything. And then just to show you um, since then, so this week, that would be, um, there we go. Um, since then, the return on ad spend has dropped a little bit, but I'm scaling even more, right? So this week is gonna be even more profitable than last week. And so um, that's essentially, that gives you a good idea of what it looks like when you're launching a your product using this strategy. It's really all about collecting data, then taking advantage of it, and then testing a lot of ads. And so I hope that gives you a good understanding. All right, so now that you've seen what it looks like inside of Ads Manager for each one of those phases, I actually wanna show you the profit and loss for each one of them. And so I've converted all of the ad spend figures from Canadian dollars to United States dollars, and I've put together these, um, these numbers. So the first week I did 1,526 in sales. So, um, you know, ad spend 1,400, cost of goods 518, fees 41. So in the first week, my, I actually lost money. So in the first week I was negative $433. And so, you know, when people ask how much money do you need to start dropshipping, I had to spend 1400 but I only lost 400 right? I didn't actually spend 1400 to get it off the ground because I got some of that back. And so a lot of it is actually a cash flow problem rather than an investing problem because I only, had, I only lost $433 in the first week. And then in the second week, I recouped that loss, right? In the second week, you can see that I made $440 profit. And so overall, since starting in the second week, I was up. So week two, that's when it started to get profitable, but barely profitable. And then week three, that's when I started scaling because it was the creative optimization phase and I found a new ad that was performing really well and I was able to scale that ad. And so you can see that uh, week three, the profit and loss was uh, just short of 10,000. So just short of, um, this is about 20%, you know, 10,000 out of 50,000. And so the profit and loss since starting on week three was up to 10,000. And then week four so far, this is incomplete. Um, sales 56,000, ad spend 24,000, cost of goods sold 20,000, fees 1,500. So the profit and loss for the week so far is almost at 12,000 US dollars. And since starting, um, the profit and loss is at 21.5 thousand. So overall in these, 25, um, in these 25 days since I've launched the store, the profit and loss has been 21,000 US dollars. All right, so now I wanna go a little bit more in depth on the creative optimization phase because this is really important. So one thing to note is that you only wanna change one variable at a time when you're split testing creatives. So there's multiple variables that you can change when you're testing creatives, right? You can test um, different scroll stoppers, different videos, different thumbnails, different ad copies, headlines, newsfeed link descriptions, call to actions, um, you know, really a ton of different things that you can test, but you only wanna change one variable at a time because if you change multiple things, you won't know what changed caused the increase or decrease in performance. So for instance, if you're testing two videos, you only want to change, you know, you want to duplicate the first ad and then change only the video, leave the same ad copy, same headline, everything else. And so that's really important. Now, another thing is that if you want to test a lot of creatives without, without spending too much budget, right? A good way to do this is with PPE. Because if you test, if you test creatives optimizing for purchases, it gets really expensive really quickly. Instead, if you do it with PPE, you can test with like $10 to $10 each per creative is usually enough in PPE. And then you can see which creative drives the most clicks to your website and add to carts, if any. And so you won't get the, the lower funnel data with PPE. You won't get as many add to carts or purchases, but you're going to get a lot more clicks for less money. And you can use the clicks to, to make a prediction on how it will do once you switch it to purchase optimization campaign. And so this is what I like to do. I do PPE campaign to test ads and I do one ad per ad set and I compare the relative performance. And so total so far, I've tested three different videos, five ad copies, three leading clips. And by leading clip, I mean a scroll stopper, the first few seconds of video to catch your attention, and then five thumbnails. 
and I'm still testing new things. I actually recently ordered an ad from a media company to get my own content made, and so I'm still waiting for that to, to get delivered, but I'm gonna keep, the, the, the creative optimization phase goes on forever, and this is how you stay consistent, and this is how you continually scale and grow the business. And I mentioned this um, earlier, but the best creative in, in a PP um, creative test is the one that drives the most actions on your website. So the most important metrics to look at are the CTR link click, because this is how many people actually click through on your website, and then the cost per view content and cost per add to cart, if any. Um, a lot of the time you're not gonna get add to carts in PPE, but if you do, that's a good sign, and that's an important metric to keep track of, you know, because you could have an ad that drives a lot of traffic, but no one actually adds to cart, and you could have an ad that drives not so much traffic, but the people that do go on your website always add to cart. And so you, you need to look at all the metrics. And if you get any purchases in PPE, this is really rare, but if you do get a purchase in PPE, that's usually a really, a really strong sign that it's a winning ad and that it's gonna do really well once you switch it to purchase optimization. All right, so just a few quick notes on scaling. I'm not gonna go in depth on scaling because this is a video about launching, but um, scaling is really easy. Honestly, once you figure out the right targeting and the right ad, it's just a matter of, it's just a matter of increasing your ad spend. And so I scaled using super lookalike audience CBO campaigns and demographic with no detailed targeting. And so I talk about both these CBO scaling strategies in my video, new Facebook ads CBO strategy, and I also talk about this in my course, Ecom Blueprint. And so this, these are the exact strategies that I use to scale. And I've been increasing the budget 50% every day at ad account midnight time until the ROAS starts to significantly drop. And so this is how I've been scaling. Um, I've actually hit the ad account daily spend limit currently. Like there's a 5,000 US dollar spend limit by default on the ad account and I've, I'm like maxing it out right now, and so that's why I'm not scaling further. So I'm in the process of getting that raised, and then I'm gonna try to keep scaling. And another thing to note here is that value optimization works really well. This is something that Facebook recently introduced. Uh, once you have, I think it's 100 purchases on your pixel, but I could be wrong, um, this becomes an option. When you're optimizing for conversions, you can select to optimize for value. And this is similar to optimizing for conversions, but it actually just gets you um, higher value customers, which leads to a higher average order value, hence a higher return on ad spend. And so I've been getting better results with value optimization than just conversion optimization. And I would recommend switching to this once you have enough data. All right, now I just wanna to quickly touch on automation, how I've automated all the tasks for this store because obviously once you, once you scale to a level like this, you start getting a bunch of customer requests and you need to fulfill all the orders on time and everything. And so I just wanna to quickly touch on how I'm doing that. So when I was first launching and testing the product and only getting a few orders, I was doing fulfillment with DSers. So I haven't talked about DSers on my channel yet, but this is a, a newish app. They released it a few months ago from AliExpress and it's, it's the most convenient AliExpress fulfillment solution. It allows you to bulk order and bulk pay for, you know, for all your orders, and it's really convenient to use. And so this is what I used at the start while I was testing the product. And as soon as I had enough, um, enough orders per day to switch to an agent, that is what I did. So after I had 20 to 30 orders per day, I switched to my agent. Usually the minimum for an agent is 50 orders per day. Um, and so, yeah, as soon as I had enough orders, I switched to an agent because that gets me faster shipping and better prices. So the agent sourced the product, he verified the quality, and we ordered stock based on the, on the current order volume. And then we streamlined the fulfillment, right? Because now he has stock, he's shipping it out every day, and we have fast lanes to the main countries. And so, um, you know, we're gonna have happy customers, fast shipping, and there shouldn't be any problem with our ad account um, getting disabled. And the last thing is customer service. This is an important thing that you need to automate. And to automate this, I used virtual assistants and Zendesk. Uh, I've already talked about this in a video, so if you haven't yet watched my video, Automating Your Store, and I talk about this uh, more in depth, and it's very valuable if you don't know how to set up customer service for your store, because you definitely don't wanna be stuck doing this yourself. All right, so that is it for this case study. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, before I end the video, I have an important announcement to make about my course. So if you're interested in my paid course or you're already a member, then make sure to pay attention to this because it applies to you. So the Ecom Blueprint course will be closing enrollment on July 20th. So in about two weeks, I'll be shutting down enrollment. You won't be able to purchase the course or access to the private group anymore for about one month. And the reason that I'm doing this is to add some new content. And so I'm gonna be adding a full case study based on this store that I've been talking about in this video. So picture this video, but a lot more in depth. I'm gonna be revealing the store, the product, the ads, and I'm also gonna be adding new Facebook ad strategies that I've been using um, based on over 500,000 of my own personal ad spend for my stores in 2019. And so um, that's why I'm closing the course. So on July 20th, um, I'm closing it. So in the next two weeks, you can get in for the current price. Then it's gonna be closed for one month. And then 
uh, in August, I'm going to be relaunching and the price is going to be going up. And so if you want to get into the current price, now is the time to do so. If you don't want to pay more later on, if you get in now, you're going to get the free updates. You're going to get all the updated content for free and you're going to have paid less than if you waited until later. And so um, definitely take action if you're interested in the course. And until July 20th, I actually have a special offer for you guys. Like this is already a really good deal, 297. But until July 20th, you can get in for only 247 with the code SAVE50. So this is your absolutely absolute last chance to get in for only 247 to the course and private group. And this is until July 20th that I'm going to be closing enrollment and adding this new content. So definitely don't miss this if you're interested. And like I mentioned, existing members will get the new content free. If you're still on the edge about the course, I just want to show you this. This is actually kind of just a coincidence because while I was recording the video, someone posted this testimonial in the course private group. Um, there's a ton of testimonials like this all the time, but this one is really, really impressive. So he's saying, hey guys, first off, I want to say thank you so much to Gabriel St. Germain. Your course changed my life forever. Um, thank you is enough, but really thank you, thank you. Not trying to brag, but my store is about to hit $500,000 in sales. So that is absolutely crazy. In three months, he's hit $500,000 in sales. And he's showing us here, um, he's showing us like proof inside of Ads Manager, the return on ad spend. It's all legit, uh, 481,000 in sales. So this is really, really impressive. And this is just following the course method, right? And there's a lot more testimonials like this. If you wanna see more testimonials, you can follow me on Instagram at Gabriel St. Gere. And I actually post uh, screenshots from inside the private group here pretty regularly. So you can see a bunch of testimonials. I have a safe story here, testimonials, and there's a ton of them. Um, these are all real testimonials from inside the private group. So it's really crazy. Um, the results that people have been able to get with the course. Uh, I can just, I could keep show. I'm not going to show you all of them because it's going to take way too long. You can see how many there are and you can go see for yourself on Instagram if, if you're interested. So yeah, if you're interested, make sure to join before July 20th when enrollment closes and that way you're going to get the updates free and get the best value possible. So this is what the website looks like and all the info is going to be in the description. Uh, you can find the link and the coupon code there and it's www.ecomblueprint.net. Right, everyone, so that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it and got a lot of value out of it. And if you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. That always supports the channel and also leave a comment below telling me what you want to see next. And on that note, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.